Good afternoon, this is Schweitzer, and we're going to look at a little video here, probably the first one you're watching on acids and bases. And the first question we ask here is, what, what makes something acidic? Now, you'll find that, for example, your tongue, uh, it, it, it only can sense certain tastes, and that all your stuff comes really through, through your nose, a lot of your taste stuff. But your tongue has a couple senses on it, and one of them is for acids. So acids, it can do a, which we call sour. We have bases, which we call bitter. And then we have sweet, which is, you know, obviously sugar type stuff. And we have salt, salty. So these are all the only inherent tastes that are on your tongue so if you were for some reason to lose your sense of smell we call it asnopic um asnopic and it means you you can no longer really taste anything in as we are in right now uh 2020 uh the, the old COVID is really us causing issues where people become asnopic and they temporarily typically that they can't taste anything really they're just losing their sense of smell. So anyways, back to the idea, what makes something acidic? What, what is my tongue actually sensing? And that is we call the hydronium ion. The H3O plus ion is called the hydronium ion. Now, it took people kind of a long time to figure out what this thing was. And uh, they originally thought it was the H plus ion alone. And then they eventually realized that really an H plus ion is jumping onto a water molecule that's producing an H3O plus ion. And that's really what it is. But because this thing was written like this for so long, these two guys here, this one and this one, are now considered to be kind of, they are representing the same thing. And you can write them interchangeably. But this is uh, any time you taste something that's acidic, whether it's a lemon, whether it's anything, you know, vinegar, um, you'll find in, in cooking and baking, acids are literally all over our life. In fact, our tongue is hardwired to taste them. So the idea of an acid being something that's isolated or very small and doesn't play a large role in your life, you just you just don't know, all right? It, it, they're literally are everywhere. Acids are catalyzing reactions. They're they're taking part in all sorts of things. They are everywhere. So, anyways, this chemical is extremely chemically reactive, and even in the smallest quantities, can be very um, noticeable. Okay. Um. All right. So, how can I recognize an acid when I see one? How would I give it a name? Now, for depending on the level of your chemistry, and this might be a brand new topic for you, or it might be something that is just review for you. But since we're going into acids, it's going to be just a quick little review of this. Acids generally follow the template of HX. Um, they're kind of a tweener between a molecule and ionic compound because they have some traits of each. This guy generally is considered to be an anion, I would say, but it's an anion, but really we draw it out as a molecule all the time. So it's really kind of a unusual situation. This has got a negative charge and this would be its positive one charge. And we charge balance them too. So for example, HPO4 minus three uh, plus one, there you get a three here. We call this particular thing triprotic. This is the number of H's, whether it's one, whether it's two, whether it's many. Just a term we use to describe how many hydrogens the acid can give, how many H pluses the atom can give. So naming acids, there's two different branches, and one of them would be called an oxy acid, and one's called a non oxy acid okay now again 
when I first started teaching chemistry, I was like, you know, they must have really screwed this up. You know, they must have really uh, messed this up because why make things more complicated? Why can't we just have one naming system for an acid? You know, and just be, be done with it. Well, it turns out that that acids are really different how they act. I mean, you know, it'd be it'd be kind of like saying there's one name for all types of cancer. Well, there's there's some really nasty types of cancer, and there's some that are more easy to deal with. And this is kind of how these things act. Like if you didn't know that two things are both acids, and you see them reacting, you'd say, well, one is radically different than the other one. And that's how oxy acids are. These acids can also do acid-base reactions, but they can also do redox reactions, which is a whole different branch of reactions. And they can, at that point, start fires, like things like that. They do all sorts of unusual stuff, okay? Uh, or it's only unusual if you don't understand it, right? So either way, so let's take a look at how we go give these things names. So first of all, oxy acids, they have oxygen. So H, NO3 is a real common, we call it nitric acid. Okay, how do we get this name? Uh, and we also do it HNO2 is nitrous acid. And there we go. So what do we, how do we get this here? Nitric versus nitrous. Well, we use the root of the anion. And then we either use ick or we use aus. Um, ick if it ends in an eight family, aus if it ends in an eight family. Keep in mind, keep in mind that whenever we use an eight or an eight, kids typically knew. Okay, that means one more oxygen, but what sometimes that really they missed it, simple, but it means it contains oxygen, all right? You can't, you know, get away from that aspect either. These guys contain oxygen, so anything that ends in eight or eight always contains oxygen. Um, so the question is how many, but it definitely contains it. So this is nitric acid, it means we're using nit nitrate in this problem, and we're using nitrite in this one. And of course you can have H, N, Okay, this is a minus 3, so it's H3N. This substance is called hydro nitric acid. All right, so that's it. I mean, it's just a plain old non-metal charge balance, and we're ready to go. We typically would put an AQ on this thing, because as I mentioned before, really the H plus is, a, is an atom, uh, called a proton sometimes because it doesn't have any uh, electrons, it's just an H plus proton. They call this thing jumps onto an H, a water molecule. So this particular thing, when you get down to the nitty gritty, water is always present on all these guys. So although I and others might lapse on rainy AQ when they were aqueous, keep in mind that it's always present. All right, so. Again, oxy acids contain oxygen. They serve fires. They're extremely corrosive. There's international rules against maybe flying large quantities of this stuff. Uh, when you go through cities and towns, they have special routes. You know that a truck, if it's containing hazardous materials, they have hazardous materials routes uh, so that when they travel through town, they don't go past schools and or things that could be problematic. I mean. If a truck containing a bunch of acid tips over and, uh, on, on, a, on a Highway 41, okay, they shut down the highway. Um, but if it tips over, you know, outside of our school, well, now we got to evacuate the whole school. we got to evacuate. It's, it's, it's problems. Okay, so uh, non-oxy acids typically used just when it's non-metals. So you should understand that non-metals like, you know, HF, uh, HCl, just take a non-metal, like this, make it an anion, and then just tack on an H. That's what we're going to be, uh, H3P, all right? Only one that wouldn't really do anything here would be what HO. That's kind of weird because that's H2O, so we don't 
typically think of water being acidic or basic, um, but technically it can take part, it had, does take part in many acid-base reactions. It's a critical part. All right, so here we go. Uh, we have a couple options here. So grab your ion sheet and I'm going to give, pause the video and take a moment and try these out. I'm going to pause it here and I'll run through them and pop back here. Okay, so hopefully you had an opportunity here to try them out. All right, what do we got here? This is going to be hydro, hydro. Now, again, when I see NH out front here, there's no oxygen starts in hydro. It's just the, the format that you're using. So for this guy here, didn't really explain this here. So let's go back and grab this guy. What's this guy doing? Well, it's the hydro is going to be there. And then we're going to have ink. So this is the formula for this guy. This one is really simple in the sense that all we ever do is sub out the new anion. This is hydronitric acid. So on these ones here, uh, it's just going to be hydro uh, phos four. That's the typical root hic acid. Now this one contains oxygen, that's per chlorate. So it's going to be per chloric acid. This is now there's no oxygen there, so we gotta follow the non-oxygen rules. So it's, this is cyanide, cyan ic acid. Ah, hold on a second here. Okay. Hydro. Cyanic acid. Phosphoric acid. And there's no hydro there, so I, I know it starts with an H. And okay, so now what's the anion? It's, it's the 8 version of phosphate. PO4 charge balance. Carbonic acids, carbonate. So it starts with an H. All acids start with an H, right? So you could just do that. Uh, carbonate is CO3, and then negative 2, so charge balance. Oxalate is C2O4, 2 goes there. Hydrofluoric acid, okay, it's fluoride. Now again, um, in this case, ic or aus, it's neither. So it's fluoride. So, F. Negative 1, positive 1. This guy here, again, uh, no oxygen. Hydro, iode, ic acid. There we go. All right. So again, as we kind of wrap down this, wrap up this first thing is, why are things acidic? What causes these uh, substances, in this case organic substances, to become, to go from non-acidic to acidic? So here, for example, we have methane, CH4. It's, it's not acidic. Okay. So none of these H's are really able to escape um, to protonate a water molecule to produce this uh, really interesting ion here. Even, even None of these guys, now we know these didn't here, but even this guy, that's not either. So that means that bond must be fairly strong. Okay. Now this one's called methanoic acid. So it's here, this is the H that gets lost uh, to produce H3O plus ions, or H plus ions. So, for some reason, that bond right there weakened. Not entirely, but enough that a few of them get knocked off, producing this. doesn't take many. I mean, if it's, if it's a lot of H's, well, then we definitely going to know. It'll be the main player uh, in lots of things in our lives. This is a weak one. It's not much get broken off. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, but why is that? Well, look what we got here. So it looks like we have these oxygens here. And this oxygen is the only difference. So the theory on this is that this is being extremely electronegative. Electronegative. And we think that this thing sucks electrons sufficiently away from this bond to weaken it. That weakens that bond. So the weaker that bond is, the stronger we might think the acid is. I just use a term stronger that we haven't talked about yet, but um, in some sense it's coming up. All right. Um, 
So why are things basic? Okay. Well, again, our tongue only is pretty pretty a uh, common thing. So in this case, it's pretty simple. It is a hydroxide ion. And this is our bitter taste. Hydroxide. I don't know if there's anything else here really that I need to mention that I've already talked about. Hydroxides are very common in our everyday life and society. Um, everything from cleaning, so acids. Now, you know, acids obviously play a role in lots of things involving food preservation and bases too. Um, yeah, they just play roles in everything from cleaning to, let's say, uh, food preservation. Now, for example, in food pre preservation, lots of people in our society can food. And one of the things we look at that and we say, okay, well, how, well, how does canning really work? Uh, well, canning, if you take, let's say, pickles, okay, or tomatoes, people, that's a pretty common thing. These pickles are literally sitting in a, in a vat of acetic acid. And that's vinegar. So you might say to yourself, okay, acids themselves must stop bacteria from growing. And that's because of a very uh, low acidic pH. And at some point, if you do pickles like this, you might boil them. You prob you might, um, if you slow uh, pressure cook this to really high temperatures, it, it doesn't typically need that. Just a little bit of hot, hot, hot water uh, in this acidic environment keeps bacteria at bay. So what about bases? Well, bases, um, that substance, you know, let's say, for example, um, benzoate. Now, benzoate um, is a chemical related to benzene. Now, benzene is very, uh, it's not good. It's, it's, a, it's not that great. Um, benzoic acid, benzoic acid, uh, is also, you know, let's use a little bit. It's uh, benzoate is a, I'm going to draw the formula, but it's just a benzene ring. And then it's got a double bond oxygen. And then it's got an OH, much like we saw on the last slide. But take this H off right here. you got this chemical looks like this. And it's very closely related to, I can put it over here if I wanted to. Okay. And now it's lost in H+, plus. it's got a negative charge. So this thing is now a common base. And it's called benzoate. It is one of the most common food preservatives in the world. Um, and there you go. Bases, sort of uh, everything from sticks of chewing gum to, gosh, you name it. They'll jam benzoate in it to... Uh, to change the pH to try and fend off bacteria growth. Alright. Can I recognize a base when I see one? Well, a couple things about bases is they don't have a special naming system. Really, they're just ionic compounds, lots of times, and they may contain a hydroxide ion. So this really threw people for a long time. For example, they need to kind of figure it out, like people knew for thousands of years, the properties of bases. Um, that, whether they're for cleaning or all sorts of things, um, they knew what bases did. It's kind of like gravity. We know we know what gravity is. We know how to calculate it. We know how to use it. But what is it? Huh. Good question, right? They knew bases. They knew nothing about them. They didn't really know what they were. They knew that this was a base. And they also knew that this was a base. Uh, they knew that this was a base. But they didn't know why they were bases. And we're going to kind of get in that a little bit and see there's a few different ways you can get to the same spot. But, um, yeah, there's no special names. Lots of times they're ionic. Ionic. Well, here we got one that's not ionic. Okay. A lot of times they can get hydroxides here and here. But here's a situation where they do not contain hydroxides. But in the end, all of these guys will eventually produce hydroxide ions which is the only thing that truly is the end-all be-all base. So somehow this chemical, through a series of chemical reactions, will produce that stuff. Okay, very common substance.